This is Dave, the guru, and another tutorial using GameSalad. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up GameSalad and give you a tour of the interface. We'll go through the basics of the interface and how you find and get around it in GameSalad. When you come to the GameSalad website, one of the first things you're going to want to do is you're going to go ahead and make a profile. So as you'll see in there, I've already have my information. So you're just going to want to put in your email, put in a username, and then put in a password. Now, one of the things you're going to want to do when you make your username is you want to make sure there are no spaces in that username. If you want a space, then use some kind of a symbol like an underscore in there. This can affect your ability to publish out of the game solid system as it doesn't recognize spaces in the names. This is a very common problem with new users, so I thought I'd make you aware of that before you begin and run into those troubles later on. So once you've made your profile and got set up, you can go ahead down and download GameSolid Creator for either Mac or Windows. So if you go right to the page, you can go ahead and download it. And you need to enter your account information and you need to be over 13 years of age. So now that we've downloaded the Game Salad software, we're going to go ahead down and start it here. So when we first open the software, we're going to see this small window. In these areas, you can create a new project, or you can start with a basic free template, which helps you find and learn code and just see how Game Salad works. You can open recent projects, and you can get access to different types of learning material provided for you by Game Salad. You can also go to the marketplace and get assets like sound, music, animation, graphics, templates, etc. that can help you build and achieve your goal of making a game. So now that we've looked at this, we can close this window out. Oh, actually, I'm going to keep it open because what we're going to do is we're going to use a template to get a look at the interface. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on this and I'm going to open the Big Top Blaster template. So now we can close this and we're going to come into the Game Salad software itself. We're going to come up and we're going to click the green plus icon to give us a real full screen view of the software. Now in this area we have a series of tabs that we can go to. So we have the project info, the scenes tab, which are the scenes where things take place in Game Salad the Actors tab, and the Tables tab. Anytime you want to get back to this menu, you do it by simply clicking the Home button. So I'll show you. We'll go off to a scene, and then we'll come back to the Home and brings us back to this area. So in this first Project Info area, this is where we set our parameters for what type of game structure we want to build in a mobile environment. So we put a title in here, we can also pick the type of device that we want to target initially, but we'll just stick with the iPad landscape for now. We pick resolution independence, which you'll learn more about later, but has to do with the graphic sizes and the retina display on Apple devices. And you can put a description to keep track of what this basic game is about if you're working on multiple games. When we go over to the scenes tab. Here in the scenes tab, this is where we make more scenes. So if we wanted to add another scene, we would simply come down to this plus icon, click it, we add another scene, and if we come up and double click in the bottom, we can go ahead and change the name. My new scene, and then we have created a new scene. And we'll get into scenes and all that later. In this video, I just want you to get the basics of understanding what everything does in the interface. And then, once again, if we wanted to delete a scene, we would select it by clicking on it, coming down, and hitting the minus, and that will delete the scene. Now, in this upper bar area, we're going to take a look at some icons that are always available to you in Game Salad, no matter what the project window down here is showing. So, in this first area, we have a back and forward button that works very similarly to a web browser's history, where you go back and forth between sites that you visited. This works very similarly in Game Salad to the places that you've been 
in the software. We have the home button, which will always bring you back to the main scene. So if we were to go into a scene, we can double click on a scene down here, bring us into a scene, and if we hit the home button, it brings us back to this project information area where we access these tabs of actors and tables right now. As well, we have the Tables tab, which brings down a drop-down menu where you can select particular tables and then go ahead and modify information. And now, as you're going to see, I'm going to use the Back button here to go back to our previous place, which is the Project Info. And then we have the Preview button, which allows us to preview the action and the elements of our game as it would be played on a device or computer. We have the HTML5 Preview button, which allows us to preview our game in the HTML5 format. And once again, we'll use the Back button. This is the Publish button, and we'll get into that later on in the series of how you publish your games. But this is where you would, when you're done or want to test your game on an actual device, you would go ahead and, and hit this button and would bring up your web browser and take you into the game solid publishing system. This is the feedback button where you report a bug or a feature request or an enhancement you'd like to see to the software. And we have the help menu which will take you to the area of game solid where the game solid cookbook is where you can find more information about the software in detailed written form. So let's go ahead and get into the heart of the software we're going to go ahead and go into the scenes area. So let's go right into the big top, which we can do by clicking on the scenes icon. Brings up a drop down menu of all our currently created scenes. And we can just click on a scene, it'll take us into our scene. Now, this is the main area where we're going to be working in Game Salad 90% of the time. This is where we actually drag in elements, add code to build our game sounds and images, etc. So let's go through the inspector area of this window. So right now we're in the game tab, which brings us into the actors palette that we're clicked on. We have the attributes palette and the devices palette. So in the actors section, this is all our actors that we would place on a scene. And inside these actors, we would place our code. So these are the prototype actors. And when you double click on an actor, it brings you inside the actor and as you see in here, this is where we begin coding what we want the actor to do on a scene, how to control it by building logic using the game salad behaviors. And if you click on a behavior in this area, it's going to give you a little description of what that behavior does. You can also find more information about each behavior in the following tutorials as well as in the game salad cookbook with detailed written information. We're going to come back in a few minutes and look at actors again. But for right now, let's just stay in this element of the software. We have our attributes tab where we create game level attributes or variables. And once again, in later videos, we'll be going through all this stuff. I just want to give you a tour and a walk around of the interface and show you the basics. So we could go ahead and add variables in here. We'll bring up this little drop down window that gives us a type of variables that we can create. We go ahead and choose one, we double click it and modify the name of that variable so that we can keep track of what we're doing with it. And then once again, you can hit the minus sign and delete out that variable. In the devices section, this shows us all the different types of information or variables in the device itself that we can access and modify. And then let's go over and we're going to go ahead and hit the scene tab up here in the inspector. This is going to bring us to the scene information. So as you see here, these are all the variables or attributes that we can modify in relationship to the scene. We have the size of the scene, which can be modified here, the height and the width. We have the wrap X and Y, which handles what happens when an actor goes off this area into the gray area of the scene. And we can check it or uncheck it as to whether an actor can travel through the scene or is stopped at the edge of the scene. Game Salad has a full section of physics so that we can modify gravity in our game and different types of elements and related to physics to the scene itself. 
the color of the scene if you didn't have a background image, the camera position, tracking, origin, rotation, and the auto rotate area which selects the device orientation of the mobile device you're targeting. As you can see, we're in landscape. If we were in portrait, we would deselect landscape and select portrait. And then once again, you can add variables to a scene in the similar fashion that I showed you in the game level area. Let's go ahead up to the layers tab. And in the layers tab, this works very similar to programs like Photoshop where we layer different elements in here and then we can adjust their layers whether an image is on top or under something else and this is all our different layers and once again we can create a new layer simply by the, hitting the plus button double clicking the layer itself and then we can rename it as well we can hit the minus sign to delete any layers and we have this area called scrollable which you can check and uncheck and we'll get into that in later videos now let's come down to the library down in the library is where we find all our behavior elements that are related to writing code or logic in game salad and then we come over to the image tab in the images tab we have all the images or artwork that we've imported now game salad uses a PNG format with an 8-bit depth and we'll get into how to properly import images and create them in later videos. You can also find more information on this in the cookbook. But you can import an image by hitting the plus sign, finding your image, and then hitting open, and it will show up in this tab here. So let me see if I can grab an image real quick. And we'll grab this cloud, and we'll open it up. And as you'll see, it shows up in here in our images tab and we can also remove it by hitting the minus sign this slider allows us to increase the size to get a better look at our images or down so we can see more images at once and the purchase images if we click this it takes us to the game salad marketplace where we can buy more content to add to our game and in the sound section this is where we bring in our sounds or music so if we wanted to add a sound or a piece of music, which they're interchangeable, and we'll get into the differences between sound and music as it more relates to how we coding and how we want these uh, sound formats or audio files to run in our software, not related to the content. In other words, music doesn't necessarily mean it's a song. It's just how we designate things in the code and they behave differently. So it has more to do with how we code it than necessarily the type. Most times we use MP3s. So as you see, we open it and we can pick whether we want to import it as music or we want to import it as a sound. And we'll learn about what we want to import when we want to import it in later videos. So let's just go ahead and import it. And as you'll see, it comes in as an import. And then once again, we can delete it by hitting the minus sign. So now let's go ahead back to the game tab and to the actors palette and then we're gonna see that we have our actors in here and our scene so if we wanted to add an actor to our scene we would simply grab the actor drag it out onto the scene here and then we can select it we can adjust the size we can rotate it in the area and we can drag it anywhere and then we can also double click on it in here it's gonna bring up the actor and there are certain things we can modify in here without affecting the prototype of the actor and we'll get into that later but if you want to get back to editing the code you go hit edit prototype and it brings you back into this actor that's in the prototype layer of the system which is in this palette area here so if we want, as well, if we want to delete, we can go ahead and do that. We can select the actor and hit the delete button on our keyboard. Or we can come up and do undelete actor. And we can edit and we can do redelete actor in this section. And as you can see, as we looked at this, you can come down. And if you wanted to add another actor, you simply click on the actor, double click down here, change the name 
to identify that actor for organizational purposes and you can come down and grab an image and drag it over when you see that bent arrow and it will put the image into the actor and then we can see here we have our actor and then we can begin to go ahead and start coding our actor so let's go ahead and look at our actor for a minute and over here we have different size elements position uh, all kinds of different variables that we can modify in relation to physics motion graphics and then one of the things we'll look at is these two tabs the first one is create group this is something where we can it doesn't actually isn't actually anything other than a container so we could say these are our our Apple related uh, things to game center and all that and we can go ahead and we would put a series of our behaviors or rules or code in here and then we can go ahead and close it up which gives us more access to space to be able to look at our logic in other areas because these can get pretty lengthy inside here so this group section is just a basic container to be able to allow us to close this up and kind of keep everything coordinated we can also create a rule behavior which you can also find the rule right down here but we use rules a lot in game solid so they've given us a separate button to be able to just come up here and create a rule and I won't go into all that rules are all about we're just going to show you the basics of the interface you can go ahead and add another condition here simply by pressing the plus if you want to get rid of a condition you just go ahead and select it and minus it out and at the same way with this X you can go ahead and delete things simply by clicking the X out at the end the same way with an image we could go ahead and say I don't I want to change this image you can delete the image out come down grab a new image and drag it in so now in the scene area let's just go ahead and you can click on adjust different elements as you can see here sometimes you have elements that are covered under other elements which can make it hard to click that's when we would want to come over to the scene tab into the layers find our element and then go ahead and click it from here if it's covered by another actor so that we can select it and then now drag it around we can also go ahead and preview our game so let's go ahead and preview it and as we see this brings up some new elements we have the scene navigator down here we can hide that by coming up and hitting this little film strip icon which will show or hide the scene area we can reduce the size of the presentation we can come down here and select the format that we want to look at it in for our particular device we're targeting and we can come over here and actually hit do a reset which will restart the area and as you can see in the interface and preview we're seeing all our code in action so you can actually play the game in preview let's go ahead and do a shot so you can see how your game is performing in this preview section and make any modifications you need to make we can pause a particular section restart it or recycle it then as well over here with this little camera area we can go ahead and take screenshots of our game or the particular scene that we're looking at so that we could save it out for our Apple uh, site or Android or whatever where you're selling your game and you have you have to re require to put in screenshots you can do it from this section here simply by grabbing this screenshot saving it out to your desktop or a folder So we're going to go ahead and hit the back button again and now that we're in here we have a couple settings in this area where we can this is where we can modify the camera area of game salad and basically what these these guides do is tell you as and we have a scrolling scene here if we have a the, when the ball comes out the screen won't start to move or the camera won't start to track until the ball or the actor that has the control camera object in it hits this yellow area and once it hits it it'll begin to track the camera so the wider we make it the later the camera begins to track either left to right or up and down and we can adjust this 
area if we wanted it just to start tracking right away we would just close it down to nothing like that and as soon as the ball goes the camera will start tracking in relation to the ball if we wanted it to happen a little later then we would just begin modifying this section here and as well we can preview from this area here and stop it and we can come back to our normal situation with the arrow where we can our selection arrow we, we can drag and select things also as well we have our table section in this drop down menu that we can access and over in the actors palette we can also look at actors by tags which kind of makes it easier to sort through them when you're trying to find a particular actor you can tag and group things and select them specifically from there some big games can have a lot of actors in here so that makes it a lot easier to do as well as when we're inside an actor we still have access to our library so when we do that when we drag an image into something it actually picks up the behavior that's most commonly related to an image so you'll see it automatically adds, adds a change image in the same way with sounds if we drag a sound it'll create the behavior right in there for that so in some ways the software is very intuitive so when you're going out to publish or working working in your game you can come right down here to this bottom area sign in sign in, in into your account and this will give you access to your anything you've purchased in your images or sounds through the game salad marketplace you also need to be signed in when you go ahead to publish out your game and if you are a pro user in order to access pro features you'll also need to be signed in anytime you want you want to access those features so most of the time you can set it and it will auto it'll auto sign in when you put your information into the game salad window you can find me on the forums under the name Lost Oasis Games. This is Dave the Guru. I'll see you in the next video.